Spell shots are one of the funnest classes in Tiny Tina Wonderlands. You can shoot guns and cast dangerous spells at enemies. And is there literally anything else you need? Well, let's get into this class guide. The spell shot is all about combining spells with guns, and they're able to wield two spells based on one of their active skills, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the class feat, which is the primary thing that you'll want to pay attention to for this class, is called spell weaving. And casting a spell or reloading a weapon grants a spell shot a stack of spell weaving, increasing spell damage. Spell weaving stacks automatically decay after a few seconds, and casting a repeater spell has a chance to award additional spell weaving stacks with each repeated cast. Now, this is a little icon that shows underneath your XP bar, and there are other effects you can add to this as you get some more of these skills further down the line you can increase like gun damage or different things based on how many stacks you have but initially this is what it does and it's well worth paying attention to this little number that you see down there as the higher that number is the more damage your spells will do the spell shots two active skills are polymorph the spell shot turns an enemy into a skeep for a few seconds if the enemy is immune the spell shot instantly casts a free spell on that enemy and gets two free stacks of spell weaving while this is active you also have a chance to just randomly cast your active spell as well the second is is Ampihestrus. The spell shot may equip a spell into their action skill slot. Whenever the spell shot presses the action skill, they cast a spell instead. Now what this means is that you actually have two spell slots. When you go to your inventory screen, you'll have two rather than one. This is a massive bonus that I think is the only skill really to pick for this class because one, you get to pick a spell here to do really any kind of elemental damage based on the situation that you're in, but two, it also means that you can equip a second spell and get the passive bonuses from having a second spell equipped. The playstyle for this class is really a glass cannon and it's all about range damage and kiting enemies away from you. Whether that damage be from spells or from guns, you'll basically be using those two spells and your guns primarily to deal all of your damage as we don't have a companion here. I personally think the only option for active skills for this class is the Ampihextrus to have those two spells equipped. I don't know why you would pick the other one. Having the two spells just gives you so much flexibility. Spells are so diverse in this game that they can drop a meteor down you can have like a big earthquake in front of you. You can cast companions from spells. You can do all sorts of different things that there's almost no reason to use the other option. And there's all the different elemental types you can play around with as well. So you can have multiple different elements on your two different skills, and then you can interweave them with the spell weaving class feed. And it just really makes this class very strong in that regard. The main mechanic to pay attention to is that spell weaving and the spell weaving stacks that you do have. They do appear under your XP bar as mentioned. You want this to be as high as possible and reloading regularly. So you want to have a weapon that has a very high fire rate and then increasing your reload speed and your fire rate based on your skills in this class. There are both the two skills that both do that. So then you can reload regularly, keep this stack high and then keep spamming your spells. Your background choice for this class is going to be the failed monk and you get two intelligence and intelligence is important for your spell cooldown. You also get four status damage. Now all spells will do an elemental effect and when an elemental effect is applied to a target, it turns into status damage. So the more status damage you have, then the more damage it'll ultimately do so that is very important as well for your wisdom to make sure that you have that extra status damage for your attributes the main two attributes you want to focus on is exactly the same it's intelligence and wisdom you want to put these as high as possible and also put some points into strength and dexterity so you can minimize those negative effects from picking the failed monk attack and then once you do get mostly your spell cooldown and your wisdom up to pretty high rates you can put some stats into strength and dexterity to increase your crit chance and crit damage because everybody loves crit chance and crit damage it's the best thing to have for practically any build really the best secondary class for the spell shot now i think that there's really a good couple of options for this class but i personally would pair it with the stabo mancer and lean into that whole glass cannon style the stabo has a class feat which just gives you a raw 30 percent critical hit chance which i mean you can't go wrong with crit hit chance it has skills that buff your gun damage and your spell damage as well as skills that buff your fire rate your movement speed so realistically this whole like moving kiting enemies around dealing damage quickly the gun, the, the spell damage, it fits really well with the Stabo Mancer. There are some skills in the Stabo Mancer's line, they're a bit more melee focused, but you can practically avoid these as the spell shot's going to be your primary skill line. You're only going to get about halfway through the Stabo Mancer line. All these things fit perfectly for this build. As an alternative option, if you wanted to go less of a glass cannon route, you could go something like the Clawbringer, which gives you much more survivability. You also get the Wyvern Companion, so they can take some of that aggressive enemies away from you. The Clawbringer does 
have skills that buff like gun damage and elemental damage, which is perfect for the spell shot. You can also increase your ward HP and your rod regeneration, which is really good if you're trying to get away from being that glass cannon type. And there's some other things like buffing pets and melee you can go in that route. But even if you went the Spore Warden, which is a companion based class, you could go that as well. Or you could even go the Graveborn because they are also mostly companion based, but you get a lot of the elemental effects from the dark magic you can do there. So there's plenty of options if you want to go the companion route as well. Some quick tips for playing this class is to use two spells of different element types so you can really hit multiple damage things. Realistically, if you have, say, a fire weapon, an ice spell, and a poison spell, you're hitting three different types of damage all at once. And you should check out my tips video if you want to know what the different element types are good at. You should also be kiting enemies, run backwards, away, slide, jump, dodge, just always move away from enemies. When you do get downed as this class, the best way to get yourself back up is actually by spamming spells because you can spam spells when you're in that down state. So you want to spam spells. It's your, probably your most reliable source of burst damage to try and get yourself back up. And most of the times you'll hit multiple targets. So it's just the best way to get yourself back up in those scenarios. For your different gear, it doesn't matter too much what you're really picking up here as long as you're getting something that has a high fire rate and that you can reload quickly and that you can really deal damage with. Some sort of SMG shotguns aren't so bad, but I really like the SMG route. You also want to get a melee weapon that has a skill on it that reduces your spell cooldown. Any way you can reduce your spell cooldown, it's super important because you want to be spamming them as much as possible. So if you have spells that are on long cooldowns, you can just get those couple of melee attacks in to lower the cooldown and then you can go casting again. Also, make sure you're reloading all of the time. Even if your clip isn't empty, if you're losing stacks, just reload, get those stacks back up and then you can cast those spells and you can really just have a good time in that way. You should check out my Clawbringer guide if you're looking for more class guides or even just check out my guide about all of the classes. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.